Welcome, Mike. Time talking football with Star Telegram Shereen Williams. 22 seasons covering the NFL. She's a voter for the Pro Football Hall of Fame as well. Of course, the Greg Hardy signing by the Cowboys dominating the discussion at the owners' meetings and, and around here certainly for the past uh, couple of weeks. I thought it was interesting that Jerry was the one guy from the front office who basically said, yeah, you know, we're in the business of signing good football players, and this is a good football player. And he is, and he definitely will help their pass rush. They only had 28 sacks last season. They need a dominant pass rusher, and he is that, talking about the on-the-field stuff. He will play the right defensive end position. That allows Demarcus Lawrence to play the left defensive end position. And, you know, since they let Demarcus Ware go, go, they really haven't had that dominant pass rusher, and he does provide that for sure. Of course, Hardy brings tons of baggage, the, the domestic violence conviction, which was, was, uh, was overturned. But the contract the Cowboys signed him to, they feel, gives them the opportunity at the first hint of trouble of cutting this guy loose, right? Yeah, there's no question. He's going to have to stay on the straight and narrow if he is going to remain a Dallas Cowboy. They have that ability with that contract to cut him after week one if they want. And we don't know how long he's going to be suspended for, Mike. He probably will be suspended somewhere between four and six games, and then they'll get him back. And how good is he going to be after being out of football over a year by the time he steps onto the field. Now, he'll get to practice and do all those sorts of things, but I'm talking about a game situation. He played one game at Carolina last year, and so we will have been out of the game in a game-type situation for more than a year by the time he comes back. You know, I I've said a number of times I didn't like the signing for, for obvious reasons. Do you think the Cowboys missed an opportunity to send a, a message uh, pertaining to domestic violence here? Do you think it just ultimately came down to a football decision? I think it came down to a football decision. I, you know, yes, they could have sent a domestic violence statement and I wish they had done that yeah. a lot of people wish they had done that they didn't they looked at on the field this tells me that they think they're really really close to winning a Super Bowl you know they felt like they had a chance last year almost got there lost that Green Bay game and a heartbreaker and they feel like they're on the verge and this is the guy that can put them over the top and help that defense which was 19th overall last season all right Clarence Hill in the Star Telegram David Moore in the morning news both writing this morning about how it's still not out of the question that the Cowboys sign Adrian Peterson who of course now has his own record of uh, domestic violence uh, with his son uh, last season. What are the chances that Adrian Peterson ends up a Dallas Cowboy? I still think they're remote, but they do have a chance to trade for him. And I think if we're if they're going to do that, it's going to be a draft day deal that they're going to trade for Adrian Peterson. But I think it's going to take an awful lot to get him here. Obviously, the money's going to be a lot, but they feel like they can do whatever is necessary to fit him under the salary cap. They're obviously willing to pay him, weren't willing to pay DeMarco Murray. But the big thing will be how many draft picks do you have to give up? How many players do you have to give up? Could it be a Herschel Walker trade in reverse, so <laughs> yeah, to speak, really. you know? Uh, and I just think the Vikings are going to ask too much for Adrian Peterson. They do tr control all the strings right now. Well, as you said, the, you know, the obvious point is they weren't willing to pay DeMarco Murray. They let him go. You know, theoretically, they'd be willing to pay Adrian Peterson. So they feel possibly that, that even though he's older, even though he has twice as many carries in his career, he's just a one-of-a-kind back and would be worth bringing in. No question about that. They see Adrian Peterson as a special running back. They did not see DeMarco Murray as a special running back. They thought he was a good running back. But the difference in money, you can tell what they think, because they'd be willing to pay Adrian Peterson $12 million. They were not willing to pay DeMarco Murray more than $6 million. I love DeMarco Murray. If you can run for 1,800 yards uh, in this league, and I don't care how good that offensive line is, and it's very, very good, but if you can run for 1,800 yards in this league, you're a really good back. Maybe not a special back, but you're a really good back, and, and he showed his durability last year too. Yeah, just to close the running back point, if, if not Adrian Peterson, and again, that still seems to be a long shot, they have McFadden now, but, but certainly it's, it's McFadden and then whichever player they can bring in here through the draft. No question. I think they've got to draft a running back. They like Tevin Coleman. He's the most like DeMarco Murray in this draft from Indiana. And, you know, the obvious guys in the first round are Todd Gurley and Melvin Gordon. And if they're sitting there when the Cowboys draft, I, it's going to be hard for them to pass on one of those running backs. But we know their obvious defensive needs, despite the addition of Greg Hardy. Let's talk about defense. Uh, a lot of work needs to be done on that side of the ball with middle linebacker Rolando McClain now uh, in the discussion. He had his moments last year but had trouble staying on the field because of injuries, uh, practice field, and, and during games to a certain extent. Where do you think the Cowboys stand in their negotiations with McLean right now? They're far apart right now. McLean thinks he's worth one thing, and the Cowboys think he's worth something else. They want to pay him about what they did 
last year in the $700,000 range, and he wants far more money than that. But obviously nobody else is willing to give him that money at this point either because he remains unsigned. So he's got some issues. Obviously he tested positive and uh, faces a four-game fine right now, and, and so another positive test spells doom. So I think that's playing into this thing too, and the fact that you know he did retire for the one year and then came back. So there's a lot of things playing against Rolanda McClain, and the Cowboys may end up offering the best deal. My first mock draft, I actually had him picking Eric uh, Kendricks, the inside linebacker from UCLA, because I think they still need, despite the signing of Jaster Br Brinkley, I think they still need a very good inside linebacker, and I think that's either Rolanda McClain or an Eric Kendricks type guy. And you think they like uh, Dawson out of TCU, you know, yeah. further down the road possibly as well? No question. They had six scouts there looking at Paul Dawson and TCU's pro day on, on Friday, so I think he'd be a possibility in the second round or maybe the third round. Tony Romo and Jason Garrett are at it again, attending basketball games. They watched the Duke game against Gonzaga in Houston, sitting uh, behind the Duke bench. There they are with the President and, and Mrs. Bush. Um, DeMarco Murray notably absent from that, uh, from that photo. Uh, take me into Romo's head to the extent that you can right now. His wide receiver is not happy, Des Bryant, with the fact that they slapped the franchise tag on him. His running back, Murray's gone. Romo's saying, give me some more weapons here, right? What do you think Tony Romo's thinking here as he watches this offseason unfold? I think he's glad they re-signed Doug Free because he's got that offensive line back intact. But you're exactly right. You know, he's got to be saying, give me something. Make Des Bryant happy. Give me a running back. Give me something. And the biggest thing with that running back is the protection. Picking up yeah. the blitz and doing those sorts of things. It's not necessarily maybe the running. You know, Joseph Randall showed some signs last year. Now, they don't trust him off the field. But it's more the blocking for Tony Romo. This is a guy who's had three back injuries in the last two years, two of them back surgery. So they need to make sure they protect his back as much as anything. But they've got to have the running game, too. This is a team that passed the ball 506 times and ran the ball 508 times. So you've got to have a reliable running game if you're going to do what they did last season and be successful. Yeah, that changed the whole dynamic, no doubt about it. Uh, Shireen is a, a voter for the Pro Football Hall of Fame presents the case for many local players uh, up for consideration. I wanted to ask you about who you think the next former Cowboy may be to get into the Hall of Fame or at least be uh, strongly considered. You know, Haley got the nod finally. Tim Brown from Woodrow Wilson as well. We're showing Darren Woodson. Talk about Woody's chances. Well, I would love for Darren Woodson to have a shot to at least get in the room and have us discuss him. We discussed John Lynch, Tampa Bay safety. We just don't treat safeties right. If you look at the pure safeties who are in the Hall of Fame, who never played the cornerback position, there's only five of them. So we need to give safeties their fair due, whether it's Steve Atwater or Darren Woodson or uh, John Lynch. You know, we need to talk about those guys and put some of those safeties in the Hall of Fame. And I know Paula Malu and Ed Reed and some of those guys are coming up in the next few years, and they look like they're going to get into the Hall of Fame. But I definitely think we need to give him some consideration. And tight end traditionally has not been given right. a whole lot of respect no either, which leads me to, to Jason Witten who appears to be the only current Cowboy who is a sure thing for, for the Hall of Fame, or is he? Yeah, well, it's hard to say sure thing, but I think he's obviously got the best shot of anybody on this team. I think one thing that will hurt him is the touchdowns. He doesn't have a lot of them, but he has the catches and all that, and he does have a ring. You know, Tony Gonzalez doesn't either, and it'd be nice for Jason to be able to get that ring and help the Cowboys do that, but he's been obviously durable and put up great numbers. I'm not going to say he's a lock, but I think he's got a really good shot to get into the Hall of Fame. Maybe not in year one. We'll see how, how this thing plays out. But I do think he eventually gets into Hall of Fame at some point. And Shereen Williams will be in the, in the room when that vote is taken. From the Star-Telegram, Shereen, thanks for joining us.